Y'all, you cannot beat the lighting in the old studio. I sure do miss doing my videos in here. It's so bright. Y'all can see me. People not going to be complaining about the quality of my video. <laughs> Shout out to Alexander Rogers. It is his birthday today. So I want to be the first to tell him happy birthday. Alex is a good person. I know Alex is a lot. Alex is a lot. His comedy is very much different from the person that he is for real. And I know the other Alex. We have plenty of conversations. Never much about what's going on on YouTube. But just regular life things that are going on. And uh, I, I just love Alex. I love Alex from when he first started. Alex also got me a Christmas gift, you guys. And if I can pin Joe down, everybody's been asking me to do this video on Joe's fear of pennies. And I pretty much uh, had planned on doing that while he was home for Christmas vacation. But you guys have to understand that Joe is an 18 year old college student who is home visiting for Christmas, has a whole bunch of friends here in Atlanta, just got a car for Christmas and is never home. <laughs> I can't like ever get him pinned down to even, you know, commit to a good 30 minutes so we can get the fucking video done. But I'm, I'm going to get it done before he leaves. Not sure if it'll happen before the end of this year, but um, we, we will get it done. And you guys will actually see the gift that Alex got me, you guys. He got me a microphone. Y'all know, <laughs> <'all> know <laughs> that big ass microphone that he uses. Um, he got me one for Christmas. So sweet. I know people complain about the quality of the sound of my videos, but I'm just like, fine to me. <laughs> but since he got the um, microphone, we will definitely put it to use. I don't know how easy it's going to be carrying it in the car, but definitely when I do videos in the house, which will probably be the video that Joe and I do together, it'll probably be in the house. So you guys will get, the, get to see the debut of the microphone. But uh, yeah, you guys, today we decided to do a video about the biggest stories of 2017. All of the stories that we talked about on top of the blogs from January to December. And I uh, thought I'd throw in a man and woman of the year at the end. How's that, y'all? Y'all like that? Y'all like that idea? You do? Okay, well then you guys get your drinks, get your snacks. This is probably going to be a two, two uh, uh, part video because I have a feeling it's going to be long. I have quite a few topics to talk about. Not that much time to do it in. Actually, I have all the time in the world. Y'all, I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation from my real job. Seems like I can't take a vacation from you guys. I think it's because I love y'all. I think I love y'all, y'all. Come on, give me some love. Give me some love. Come on. I got to give y'all one for the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Child. Y'all know I love the rock stars, and the rock stars love Rocky, y'all. It's a love fest here. <laughs> y'all saw my pajamas. I snuck it in on that ass. I'm all made up on the top. Okay, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the bottom, but that's all good, y'all. You ain't gonna see that no more. At least I don't think so. So, with all that being said, guys and girls, rock stars alike, this is just a little bit of talk about what's been at the top of the blogs for 2017. Let's get to it. rock stars hate to start the video off this way but hey what can we say january was an eventful month and probably what set the standard for the fool of fucking niggatry that has ensued since the inauguration day that's right you guys we got to talk about your president donald trump the orange clown the man who is set to run this country for the next four years well actually i'll say the next three years because like I told you guys at the beginning of this year, I don't think you guys can count on Donald Trump being impeached. The fact that the Congress is run by the Republicans, I don't believe they will ever impeach this man. And this man has had plenty of offenses all year long, too many to name. But the latest of them all is actually how he started in his presidency, is with the sexual harassment allegations that um, have plagued him uh, for quite some time. Like I said, before he even started his presidential campaign, we couldn't stand him back in January and we can't stand them today. Actually, I know some of my rock stars out there did vote for Donald Trump. And while I don't understand why you would do that, uh, I guess we will respect the fact that the man is the president of the United States. Your president. My president is still Barack Obama. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you guys, it has been um, a turbulent year, a year of chaos. 
Yes, half of his administration is gone. He has made it his number one mission to undo many of the things that the Obama administration had set in place and piss off somewhere around 70% of the United States population. Um, but yet and still, he is still firmly in place in office. I told you guys that the Republicans, they will always continue to support even the bullshit of that administration because they don't want to, uh, what is the word, cut off their nose to spike themselves, okay? They'll deal with his foolishness in the background, but when he's out in public and when they have to uh, support him, they will, all right? So, that's it, y'all. Y'all got three more years of old Donald Trump, so you might as well get used to it. Um, I talk to my girlfriend, Debbie, all the time, and she's always going on and on about the uh, the um, impeachment. You know, I know Auntie Maxine. I know Auntie Maxine told us that in December it would be happening, but we are on December 29th. <laughs> it has not happened, you guys. I don't think we can count on an impeachment. I could be wrong, and I would be very happy if I was indeed wrong. However, uh, just watching everything that he does and says, um, things that if President Obama even attempted to do, uh, he would have been thrown under the fucking bus. He would have been rolled over and pushed into his grave. Donald Trump, is he gets away with every single thing. We um, have a little problem with what he says, and then we move on to the next. Nothing ever happens, so... Hey, I, don't, I, I can't even worry myself about it. I told you guys already. I don't even. I don't even be watching CNN like that too much. Okay, CNN hates Donald Trump. By the way, are they biased? I would be remiss if I didn't say that they weren't. Okay, they definitely do not like him, but he does not like them as well. Okay, by him attacking the media, always saying that there's fake news if they don't agree with Donald Trump, whether or not that is true. Uh, we can for sure say that um, Donald Trump has managed to alienate most of the media that we get our news from. He can't control it. I'll, however, he is really trying to figure out ways to do so. And uh, we even seen that in this latest uh, bill or law, whatever it's called, with the net neutra neutrality and them undoing that and the World Wide Web being subject to um, being controlled by higher powers and, you know, larger conglomerates and uh, information not as readily available as it should be. So it's a whole lot going on, yet and still, your president is still there, child. <laughs> <laughs> can't worry about Donald Trump. Let me just say this. I won't expect him to be impeached. However, if he if he is, I'll, I'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay? But a bitch can't hold her breath on whether or not the nigga gonna be in office for these next three years or not. Okay? I'm just gonna expect the worst and plan for the best. Another story that was some fallout from uh, Donald Trump's... Um, placement in the presidential office is one of your cousins y'all Steve Harvey also in January remember not too long after the inauguration Steve Harvey took it upon himself to go and meet with Donald Trump because he told us later on of course that the Obama administration had told him personally that he needed to make sure that he extended the olive branch of friendship and go and meet with Donald Trump to see what he can do to help further the black cause in the urban community we had our side eye on that didn't quite understand wasn't quite mature enough did not feel like coming around at the time to think that one of our own and i use that word loosely child one of our own would be so quick to go and meet with donald trump when uh we wasn't ready to see the motherfucker but uh hey steve harvey went and talked to him supposedly the the subject on the table was um um, HUD, housing and urban development, uh, along with uh, Ben, uh, what's his name, Ben Carson, um, and trying to figure out ways that they can help the black community building homes and developing the community and all of this, right? After it was done, okay, Steve Harvey comes out and in front of all of the uh, 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 news people, he told us that, hey, 
after sitting down with Donald Trump for these 35, 45 minutes or whatnots, I was able to find out that this is a good person and that he cares about us black people. And I know that he is going to do all that he can to make good on these promises that he, okay, now I'm, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> okay, but if you can just imagine Steve Harvey tap dancing and doing the jig as he was talking about this because we was just like, nigga, please. Ain't absolutely no way that in them 45 minutes you was able to surmise that uh, Donald Trump was a good person and that he has the black community's interest at heart. Really? It did not take a genius to know that we were being pandered to. And all we needed was for Steve Harvey to buck his eyes out bigger and hang his big lips even lower. And then we would have got the complete picture of old oh, Steve Harvey shucking and jiving for the administration. Black people was done with Steve Harvey. I've been done with Steve Harvey for a long time. I, I just I, I just don't like Steve Harvey and Marjorie is not my favorite person either. We also know later on that Steve Harvey came out and said that he regretted okay going to talk to Donald Trump that um, like I said Obama administration had told him personally comes out that the, no the Obama administration did not tell him that personally it was more so of them just saying that in this transition everybody should be open and um, wait to see what Donald Trump will will bring don't you know don't be smirchify okay shout out to Don King <laughs> don't be smirchify the man before he can even get in the office okay even though we should have because he ain't did shit for us yet so child that's it that's it that's it February was an eventful month that was the month that Beyonce yes you guys the queen bee herself announced that she was pregnant and wait a minute not only was she pregnant with one child but she was pregnant with two that's right, you guys. Beyonce was having twins. And the world was ecstatic. She had over 11 million views and likes on her Instagram page when she posted a picture of her at a Houston Mall JCPenney's photo booth. <laughs> Oh, that picture was so cheesy to me, but it was cute at the same time. It was a picture of her with her bare stomach out with a bunch of flowers and fake blue background and whatnots. Okay, Beyonce was like, bitch, you ain't gonna sit up here and tell me that these babies ain't real this time. And that I sit down all the time and my stomach folds and I got a prosthetic on and all of that. These babies are very much real and they are in my stomach and I am carrying, carrying them to term. We was excited. And we also fully expected Beyonce to carry on with uh, the obligations that she already had in place. Then we saw her on an award show. What was that, you guys? Was it the BT? No, it wasn't the BT. It was the American Music Awards. It was the Grammys. It was something. We saw her. She was dressed up in all of her, um, you know, her goddess uh, beauty with the women at the table. You guys remember that? And we saw quickly that Beyonce, when she was pregnant with Blue, is very much a different Beyonce when she is pregnant with two babies. Maybe she cannot move the same. Maybe she cannot breathe the same. Maybe she cannot dance the same. Nobody expects a pregnant woman of twins um, to get up there and do the things that she was being able to do um, beforehand. Even at very early in the term of her late of her, of her pregnancy, we just can't expect that of Beyonce. Okay, uh, shit got really real when she decided that she could not perform at Coachella 2017. But never one to fail her fans. Uh, she she told everybody that she will be back in 2018 bigger and better um, and bolder as the new Beyonce and I have no doubt that she will um, definitely pull that off Beyonce is Beyonce all the time Beyonce is getting older though you guys and uh, yeah she's a mom and um, now she has to live her life accordingly and you know kind of compartmentalize and do shit when she can after she did the announcement Coachella she had to put that on the back burner we just saw her she was just chilling y'all she was trying to have these babies uh, finally some months later she did have the babies a boy and a girl uh, Rumi and Sir okay and again the world rejoiced 
rejoiced. She posted a picture of her holding the baby. You know the baby. <laughs> I was like, girl, get the neck. Get they neck. She posted a picture of them, her holding the babies. And that is really the only official pictures that we have even seen of the kids. She has been very much more guarded with these two than she was with Blue Ivy from the beginning. And that's fine. We, we ain't got to see the kids until, you know, the Carters are ready to let everybody see them. Um, we did get a couple of pictures that they had leaked on Instagram and honey Beyonce's people was <laughs> was on y'all with the quickness and was getting shit deleted left and right I'm talking about whole pages like okay you want to do this shit and you wasn't supposed to we gonna get rid of you so everybody started to take the pictures down but we were able to see how cute they were um pretty much look like how blue did when she you know when she was a baby so uh yeah congratulations to Beyonce that went down in February you know what else went down in February child that damn black china and rob Child, they like to run our pressure up so damn high that we had to go on and finally retire them from top of the blogs, okay? But but since we talking about the year in review, we've got to talk about the fool of fucking niggatry of Black Rob. Black China and Rob. <laughs> so at first, I will admit that we all got a good key key out of the fact that those two had hooked up together. We was pretty much sick of the Kardashians. You guys know that I like the Kardashians generally. But, you know, it... it, it the Kardashians, you know, everything kind of works in their favor, um, especially for the girls. And somewhere, somehow, some way along the way, it seemed that Rob Kardashian was always the odd man out, okay? That they kind of treated him as a cast out, a castaway, you know, didn't give him too much attention. Okay, just kind of made him seem like he was the fuck up the, of the family. And uh, we felt sorry for Rob. So when Black China uh, and Rob hooked up together... Uh, seems like it was a drunken um, night of passion that turned into something more. Uh, we got a good key key out of it. Like, wow, she's kind of spitting in the face of the Kardashians, okay? Your, 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 your daughter want to take my man? Fine, I'm going to take your damn brother. So, uh, yeah, Tyga is with Kylie. And uh, China is with rob we started to see them hanging out together more uh started to look like rob kardashian was taking on a healthier lifestyle he was losing weight he seemed to be happy he was no longer the recluse she was getting him, him out he was being seen in public and we were like wow well, something could really come of this then all of a sudden <laughs> a ring showed up and now we were like oh already you guys are talking about engagement Hmm. Not too long after that, or it could even been before that, but I think it was after that, we found out that she was pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> now shit really, really does get real, right? Because uh, what started off as a good, strong key key is now a baby involved. And now it's not too much of a laughing matter anymore. But I will say that I still remain hopeful. You guys go back and watch my videos. I know you guys are probably like that damn Roxanne just be trying to think that everybody got something good in them. Okay. But I was really trying to hope that this relationship was going to work out. Um, that, you know, that, that she might have found a needle in the haystack and Rob and that, you know, these two could get some happiness out of each other. I quickly found out that I was wrong when I finally watched uh, Black China and Rob's reality show. That show let me know that, yeah. Yes, indeed, this is a train wreck. I'm talking about two trains, Amtrak trains, speeding at the highest on the same track, heading right for each other. There was no way that this relationship was going to work out um, because of many factors. The fact that Rob was depressed. Rob has a mental um, instability that is not going to be cured by even somebody just loving him this is something that requires professional help he's a recluse okay he has self-esteem issues he's gained a lot of weight okay i wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't drinking and doing drugs in there we already know he was getting high okay but there could be way more stronger things than just weed happening up in there um you know rob has a lot of things going on, on top of that he's spoiled um he's sort of babied and um so rob has a lot of things and then we got China, who is from the streets, who's not equipped to be with somebody like a Rob, okay, who might not necessarily take life as seriously as she should. Um, the fact that she allowed herself to get pregnant by this man, I mean, of course, I know for a fact that I won't stoop so low as to say that she planned on getting pregnant by him so that she can take advantage of him and try to get money out of him. But I will say that Somewhere in the back of her mind, she probably was like, if this shit don't go right, at least I got a baby and I know I can get some shit out of him. <laughs> 
<laughs> I hate to look at people that way. You guys, but well, we got to call a duck a duck, okay? This girl is street smart, okay? This girl comes from less than, all right? And, you know, I'm not even going to bring up where she's come from, but we know that a person like China and a person like Rob kind of is like oil and water. So their relationship very much quickly declined as we saw the problems that went on in that relationship. And I was just like, oh no, this is not going to work. And now they're having a baby? This is terrible. They had the baby. They were quiet for a while. Um, I guess behind the scenes trying to work out some sort of relationship between each other. But Black China seemed to have moved on and Rob didn't know that. She was fucking around with other people and doing whatever she was doing. He got wind of it and got upset and then one day got a hair up his ass child and started posting all over Instagram about Black China and posting pictures of her naked and talking about how she's seeing all these people and how she's fucked all these people and how she had plastic surgery right after she had the baby and that she does drugs and that she's a drunk and that she's this and she's that. Charlotte was a mess. Okay. Of course, Black China, being who she is, is not going to take that lying down. So she retaliated. Um, probably fanned the what was it? Fanned the the fumes. Um, made him even more upset by posting shit back at him. And um, that went on for some days. And finally, they was able to get control of Rob get him to take that shit down but not before black china decided to file a lawsuit against him um revenge porn and a whole bunch of other things uh them still trying to figure out custody of this baby um just a disaster right it's not funny when you have a baby in the middle of it who's innocent who hasn't chosen to be here but has to deal with really two parents that ain't got no fucking sense so <clears throat> now they seem to have come to some sort of agreement i see that rob has the baby sometimes and that she has the baby other times they've been pretty quiet even though we've heard about other um, stories about her suing different people in the kardashian family um but as far as Rob and China are concerned, they seem to have worked out something. We haven't seen Rob. That lets me know that he has become even further of a recluse, that he um, probably is about 400, 500 pounds. I mean, who is to know? And is still cornered off somewhere, um, not getting the mental help that he ha that he needs. I know that Kris Jenner has to be frustrated with him. They will never say that in public, but I, I know that the things that have gone on with Rob um, in these last year or two <clears throat> has probably put them completely over the edge. They probably don't know what to do with them. So they probably just figure we can just get the nigga to just stay off in the room some damn way and play with his little girl. You know, it, it, that's going to have to do. So we'll see what happens with Black China and Rob. They're always going to be intertwined because they have a baby together, right? Then as far as them making it work and them becoming a couple again, no, I absolutely don't see that. Black China will be fine because Black China is a hustler. She has her makeup line and her clothing line and, you know, she's trying to be a rapper. <laughs> Not every stripper can become one, China. Somebody let her know that, please. And I also heard that she's possibly will be on Love and Hip Hop. Not quite sure which um, franchise, but I'm thinking it would be Hollywood if any of them. Um, so, yeah, you know, they, they, they've moved on and they're doing whatever they got to do to survive. But, uh, yeah, child, February <laughs> and them too too much then right when we thought february was coming to a close and the drama was dying down we had sheether that was the disc record from remy ma to Nicki minaj and i didn't wasn't following no beef between the two of these uh girls so i was completely shocked that remy was feeling that kind of way <laughs> about Nicki. but when that that when that song dropped i believe it was a saturday when that song dropped and i listened to the words I was very, 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 very shocked that Remy took it all the way there. And in one fell swoop, even though a lot of people still will not admit that, Remy Ma did some damage to Nicki Minaj. I won't say that she's done any damage to her career because Nicki Minaj's career was already kind of suffering. But she opened the eyes to a lot of people who was kind of indifferent to Nicki Minaj. And she kind of tilted the table in her favor, or at least out of the favor of Nicki Minaj, not necessarily even in Remy Ma's um, um, favor, but definitely tilted it away from Nicki Minaj. So she put Nicki Minaj on notice and um, 
we were all expecting a, a reply. Well, Nicki Minaj did not reply right away. And um, when you don't reply in a fight, when somebody kind of calls you out, um, a lot of people will say that you lost. My, I understand that Nicki Minaj was taking the I am an A-list rapper. I don't need to stoop to these type of levels. I don't need to give her any more shine than she's already gotten. Okay, I don't need to go there. And, and, and she maybe she didn't need to. But did that help her career? I'm sure behind the scenes she was hearing over and over and over again that she needed to do something. So, sometime later, it was a month or a couple of months later, uh, she came out with three songs. Can't even tell you what the name of the songs are. Didn't write it down. But uh, that should let you know how much those songs did not make an impact. They were playing one of the songs. God, what was the name of the song? I can remember seeing, was it Janae Iko on a Snapchat video singing the song? Uh, no Frauds. They played No Frauds a lot out here in Atlanta anyway trying to get it to pick up some steam and it never did the other two songs i I don't i I couldn't even tell you what the name of them are i I don't remember nothing about them but when she had those three songs come out and none of them did anything uh then we knew that Nicki minaj was in trouble she also has been on a lot of features and some of them have done well the most of you know we know rake it up and um what, what was the other Oh, of course, Motorsport, that's out now. But, you know, I'm still not quite sure. I've been saying it all year to the barbs out there who follow me. Um, Y'all, I I don't have anything against Nicki Minaj. And I'm not a hip-hop head like that. But it don't take a genius to know that when you are a Nicki Minaj, you need to put out something. Especially when there is other people around that is just waiting to take your spot. They waiting. Do you know you can't be on top forever? Everybody fucking gets old. Everybody moves on to the next stage. Okay, look at Usher. Child, that Usher is just, <laughs> just, child, we don't know what to do with Usher. Okay, so you've got to fight for your spot. And you can't get so comfortable where you just feel like it's going to always be your spot. I know Nicki Minaj has it in her. She has, she's talented. She's a talented rapper. But she's been knocked off her square. Okay, so we've got this album that's supposed to be coming out soon i still don't know when like how many years has it been since she hasn't put anything out in the meantime like i said not quite sure if any of that helped remy ma because i mean in the in the black community you know we we know who remy ma is um on a worldwide huge standpoint like, if we were to compare Nicki Minaj to Remy Ma, there's no comparison, right? And we already knew about Remy Ma before she even went to jail. So, you know, like I said, I'm not quite sure if that's helped her. I mean, you know, Remy Ma has be, has worked on making herself become more likable. You know, now she has a record deal a, 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 with a, a major label and <clears throat> maybe bigger things will come. You know, we also like the fact that she's married to Papoose and they seem to love each other. You know, they got that whole black love movement going on. So, other things about Remy Ma that we we, we, we do admire but i just you know the sheather thing like i, I am i saying it right because i know y'all gonna correct me sheather 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 right like ether like nas y'all know nas is my man and talk about six degrees of separation because we know that nas and Nicki minaj supposedly are a couple child that's neither here nor there we was talking about remy and Nicki. i hate that those two was fighting um, because it seems like, you know, with them both being from somewhere in New York, <laughs> that, you know, they could have gone pretty far by working together. But, I mean, I guess everybody ain't got to get along, just like Rod Digger said the other day. There's ways for women to still all be in the game and not necessarily get along, but, you know, not be at each other's fucking throats, too, so. But, uh, yeah, that was in February, too, child. We only on February. A whole lot went on. I'm telling you, a whole lot went on in 2017. Let's get on the mark. All right, you guys, so I'm going to say that this is March-ish. Because really, I couldn't put a definite date to when the Queen's Court started. But I will say that even though it didn't become something really in the, an official name until probably August, um, in March-ish, that was when... I can remember Kaya. Let me make sure I get her name right, you guys. I can remember that Kaya was um, coming at Remy Ma about Papoose. 
okay and the fact that she really loved papoose and all of that you guys remember that was on one of the episodes that she had with t.s madison but again it was not quite the queen's court yet if i was really to think about when they actually t.s madison and, and kaya started working together i actually can remember a few different times that videos would pop up where you know they were just at T.S. Madison's house and they just were recording talking about different things you know you guys remember the video of, of Kaya teasing Janet Jackson about her whisper song <laughs> <laughs> some of the funniest shit I have ever seen in life you guys um and I think that the show ended up evolving like it would just be them recording getting together every now and then Kaya coming back to T.S. Madison's house and them recording things and then again like I said March when that Papoose video started that that picked up some traction and then it started to really really grow with the start of Facebook live they started to put a show on Facebook Facebook Live and really got a huge following somewhere around 300,000 viewers and you know because we trying to get to this money not only were they posting on Facebook Live but they were also posting their videos on their own separate pages on YouTube um, and then of course the blogs were picking up different parts of their videos and posting it so they were getting a lot of publicity um, and understandably so there's something about the queen's court i already talked about it before on top of the blogs but there's something about that brand of in your face bluntness um that the people of america like right now you get that definitely with kaya and t.s madison i told you guys before that it's sort of like the bad cop and the shady not necessarily the good cop but the bad cop for sure being kaya and the shady cop being t.s madison um they are funny as hell they seem to be knowledgeable in the things that they talk about and even though kaya can be quite brutal and very very much real to the point where you just kind of flinch like oh my god did she j really just say that whatever it is about that show people really do enjoy i even watch the show sometimes and i think that those two are hilarious of course i you know i we know about the roastings of janet jackson like i said of trina of um just recently of toya and regine and, and countless other people that they have talked about wendy wendell you know all of the <laughs> different names that they give wendy williams that show is just right now it is the show there's even talk of them possibly getting some sort of tv deal so we'll see if that happens in 2018 but that also gives me some concern because one of the things about being on like a facebook live or even youtube even though youtube is really hell bent on censoring us one thing about being on streams you know streams like this is that we still have control over what we do the only thing is that we can get flagged and we may not necessarily make any money from it, but we can still say what we want. When you start talking about TVs, TV shows, networks, corporations, okay, you're talking about straight lace, you're talking about legal issues, you're talking about people that don't want to push the envelope like that. So I don't know how their brand of entertainment would even fare on national tv i mean obviously they would have to be on something like a cable show but even that the shit that they say they could land a, a network in a whole lot of legal problems so it could change the tone of the show if they actually went to tv um, because then you might see them censoring themselves and not necessarily saying the things that they normally would have said if they were on youtube or facebook live or something like that okay look at wendy williams the people that they love the person that they love to tease even though wendy williams was not that type of brutal and in your face that kaya is because really it's kaya wendy williams was probably the most comparable at one time to them where she would be on the radio show and she was just kind of saying what the hell she wanted to say doing the hell what the hell she wanted to do when she came to tv and she realized that she had alienated a lot of the people that she would have liked to have had as guests okay and that a lot of the sponsorship and a lot of people that were supporting her show were nervous about the things that she said she had to scale it back now she still is she can still be um raw but not, not ever in the way that she used to be when she was on a radio show. She had to change it. And I'm just wondering, could, you know, could Kaya and T.S. Madison even do that? But would they want that? And would their viewers 
appreciate that. I'm sure their viewers would love to see them on a huge you know, on a, on a, a way huger scale. But um, right now, they're in a good place because I'm sure they're making good money from Facebook Live and, you know, all the other streaming services that put their show on. And, uh, yeah, they just, they, they, they have it. They have it. They are funny. A lot of people don't like them because of the things that they say. Um, but the majority right now, they feeling the queen's court you guys we're gonna see what happens with them next next uh year but i am hoping and wishing for good things for them uh they are gonna blow up you guys so you might as well get ready all right you guys and in april what did we have but the white women saving the black folks you guys remember that pepsi commercial <laughs> That was supposed to tackle the heavy issues of uh, racial conflict and uh, police brutality. Kendall Jenner was very excited about an ad campaign that she was doing with Pepsi that was going to be airing in April. They were, did a lot of publicity about it. You know, she was posting about it. There was a huge countdown on her Instagram. She was proud of the work that she did. And then the, the commercial hit. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, we had Kendall Jenner. You know, she was at a modeling uh, job, and she was getting her makeup done. And uh, outside the window of the photo shoot that she was going to be working at, uh, there was some civil unrest. And there were people walking down the streets. They were marching. They were holding signs. Uh, there were police out there in riot gear. Shit was going down, okay? And Kendall was in there getting her damn makeup for a photo shoot. So she had this moment of clarity where she looks out the window and somebody in the march look at her and they give her the look like, girl, what you doing in there? You need to be out here. And she was just like, okay, I got you. <laughs> so Kendall politely jumped up from the seat, okay, left all of the makeup artists and the photographers and the whatnots and she joined the march. That doesn't sound like it would be bad, right? Well, that part wasn't bad. The bad part is when she comes in the middle of the civil unrest and she walks up to the police in the barricades they have on the riot gear and, uh, hey, she hands him a Pepsi. <laughs> I was just like, bitch, this is all we had to do to keep from getting killed by the police is just hand the motherfuckers a damn Pepsi. Child, why they didn't tell us that? <laughs> in that one, two and a half minute long commercial, she managed to offend quite a few people of the Black Lives Matter movement, most people of the Black Lives Matter movement, by trivializing huge issues with police brutality. And boy, people was not happy about it. Child, they let that girl have it. They let her have it. Because once she hands them the Pepsi, okay, the police was like, you all right with me. You tell all these niggas around here they all right too. <laughs> Who told the Jenner family that that was okay? Nobody on their team let them know that that probably was not the best idea for a commercial. Child, they ripped that girl a new asshole. Honey, they had memes. One of my favorite ones is the, is the one of her marching with Martin Luther King and them arm in arm with a Pepsi in her hand. <laughs> Child, it was a mess. And, honey, they gave that girl so much of the blues that, honey, they say that she almost had a nervous breakdown, okay? Pepsi, of course, hurried up and pulled the ad and apologized for the insensitivity. Um, but I just I just didn't understand why they did not realize that. You were making something that is very huge, very small and trivial. No big deal. You know, I'm going to have you a cola, sit on back, everything going to be okay. That is not what it is. And that also kind of brings you back to the cluelessness of the Kardashians. I always say that the Kardashians are not, um, I don't believe that they are all that vindictive and horrible and, and conniving that a lot of people think that they are. I think that they are just dumb. They're just clueless. They just have no idea. They don't know. They are rich and they're pretty girls and, you know, they make their money and, um, you know, real serious, huge issues like that, they are ignorant too. So, and this was a, this was a good example of that. So, <laughs> you know, so that after a couple of months, a few months later on the Kardashian show, cause you know, they always save the shit for the show. You know, it came out that she felt really bad and she almost had a nervous breakdown and she was crying and she wanted to apologize and all that. And I, I honestly don't think that the girl was really trying to do anything more. She really thought she was doing something with that commercial. But baby, we hurried up and let her know that she was not. 
You are not doing anything, Kendall. Don't do shit like that. Get you some black people on your team. Not the kiss-ass ones. The ones that's going to tell you what's what. And maybe we won't have this faux pas no more. I couldn't find anything for May. But for June, I was able to find out that the release of 444 came out, you guys. And that is the Jay-Z album. The answer, some say, to the Lemonade album that Beyonce put out the year before. The admittance that... Jay-Z cheated on his wife, Beyonce. We already had some sort of an idea when she put out Lemonade, even though we started to wonder if Lemonade was about her and maybe her mother and maybe just women in general that have had to deal with a cheating spouse or boyfriend or whatever. It was confirmation that the two of them were indeed human, that even a billion dollars on the elevator is the same as a motherfucker that is $40 overdrawn in the bank. <laughs> Same problems, you guys. Just a different tax bracket. So we appreciated Jay-Z coming out with this album. Being very much uncharacteristically open. Uh, this is not usually something that Jay-Z is. Um, and I still am kind of... I'm still leery about the fact that he's come out with so much information lately. A lot of people say, you know, charge it up to the fact that he's more mature, he's grown up, he's realized what's important in his life and all of that. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just let it be that for now. Okay, because I don't have any proof of anything else. But um, I, I will admit that I started to believe, I started to feel like it kind of was starting to feel like he was saying so much that they were putting shit out leaking shit out or you know a little bit at a time uh just to soften the blow of some bad shit that might be coming down the pike later on but we don't have any proof of that and nothing has come out um you know a lot of people will say that jay-z and beyonce are very calculating in the way that they release their music and you know that they make people believe certain things so you can become emotionally invested and you want to spend your money you want to listen to the words because you know for the women we love beyonce and bitch how could you cheat on this woman who is so fantastic and all of that and then for the men you know they also want to learn some shit from jay-z because they respect him from being in the game for so long and all that. so a part of it could be some calculations um until some more shit come out we we don't know okay but 444 was a very much different turn musically than uh, jay-z's former music um seemed to really be saying some shit ain't nothing that you really can groove to but you sit down get you a glass of wine and your cognac your hen or whatever you do you listen to the words and you learn some shit so that, that's all i got out of 444 how'd you guys like 444 not my favorite jay-z album but um everything those two touch turns to go so they're gonna be all right also in june speaking of music was the release of uh scissors music okay her album control came out in june and i didn't know anything about SZA. seems the only person who was screaming from the rafters how talented this girl was it was um one of my rock stars angela who has the youtube channel uh smiley adventures um, you guys need to check that channel out, by the way. She is a young girl. I've talked about her a few times before who travels and just vlogs all of her travels. She travels by herself, goes all over the world, has some great videos. I mean, I swear I live vicariously through her. Sometimes I just be like, I just want Jada to be like this. Just kind of take the world by the, you know, by the, 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 uh, the. The, the strings what's the word y'all and kind of just live life but anyway i'm getting off track she was the only person that i used to see that would always talk about scissor and talk about her album coming out and how talented she was and how much of a fan that she was and then the album came out and then i quickly found out that scissor Cis definitely um was a talent to be uh, reckoned with and um 2017 has been good to her not a fan of that song the weekend but the rest of the album i actually do like um you know she's a part of this new <laughs> i won't necessarily give it the mew mew pew pew baby talk bullshit <laughs> but you know she's She's also part of this new era of music of a woman kind of like weed 
singing, uh, you know, sit back and be drunk and high with your man and kind of listen to their music kind of thing, child. So, but I like SZA. I think she's a beautiful girl. Um, it's onward and upward for her. 2018 only just promises to get better for her, even though I'm starting to hear certain things about her not being happy in the spotlight. It, it gives me a little bit of worry. I hope that she's not going to kind of succumb to that whole D'Angelo being nervous and stressed out with the overwhelming support of people just kind of following his music and him not being able to handle all the attention. Um, she's not quite there yet, but I've heard some things about SZA having some issues with dealing with all of the pressure of being a celebrity so we'll see but uh SZA, yeah she was something to talk about in 2017.